Hi, good afternoon, everybody. Tom Stewart here. I'm with uh, Liz Trotter. Hello, Liz. Hello. And I'm sorry, I'm laughing already. We were just talking uh, before we went live here. I've got Paul Freed with uh, Made in Hoboken, Best Clean. He's got several brands he'll tell you all about. But uh, you guys are in for a treat today. Um, Paul's going to be sharing with us a lot of his uh, guerrilla marketing ideas and programs that he's implemented, campaigns he's implemented over the years, show us a lot of real life examples, take us for a tour. Um, you know, buckle up folks. I'm not sure what all to expect <laughs> here. Um, certainly be taking your questions as well. Please uh, feel free to, to, to ask questions as we go. Um, I guess we uh, started kind of on time today and that probably messed some people up there. We, we never start on time. I, I don't want Paul to start um, showing stuff too early before we get all the people on either. Yeah. Because they usually, they, they know that we're never on time, Paul. So <laughs> people usually, well, it looks like Denise here, but you know, usually they're like, oh, well, we'll wait until we think they're really gonna be there. Well, I'm trying to pull up right now and see who I can find on here. Who's in business today? This is something cool. I was playing around with uh, green screen this weekend, and yeah. I thought I turned it all off. Look at my green coffee mug. <laughs> That's funny. Uh, apparently, your green screen is still up and working. That is cool looking, though. Yeah, I'm glad I'm not wearing a green shirt. Yeah, well, I kind of wish you were, Tom, tell you the truth. I feel like I would, like, really be impressed by your brick shirt. Mm -hmm. All right. Hey, Denise. Oh, we got Leslie. All right. I got it. We got a few people. Hey, Leslie. Happy Monday. Uh, yeah, you guys are the ones, right? You guys know. <laughs> Denise wants to know, what's going on with your cup? It's the green screen. How does that work, Tom? I'm not understanding, though. It's a it's a setting with, with with within the software we use. You could put a screen up oh. behind me, the whole thing would 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 look like it were brick. I thought I turned that off though, but maybe I didn't. Nope, it's on. Um, I can maybe change the background. Let's see what this does. See, that's uh, <laughs> uh, makes it look like I'm in somebody's living room. Yeah, it does. I like the brick better, but that's just weird. <laughs> Maybe I can turn that off. Yeah, I I think that uh, that it would be some good little marketing right there. If we give put that in Paul's hand, he'd come up with something. Oh, yeah. Tom, that's so boring. Put the brick back on. You want you I, like I, I did. I did like the brick. Okay. All right, so you guys know that we brought Paul on today because he is the master of marketing. Yes, that's much better, Tom. Absolutely the master of marketing in our industry. Nobody does it better. Nobody. And, oh, and that's true. I mean, I don't know. But well, thank, you, you thank give me a name. Me. You give me a name, Paul. Oh, I, there's plenty out there. No, give me one. I, you can't put me on the spot like you don't have to because do we that. all know there is no other name. <laughs> you know, let's just leave yeah. it. You're 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 at the top of the list. So yeah, you're at the top of that list. Yeah. Well, okay. I, I I appreciate that. It, you know, well, it's, um, well, I don't know. Are we ready to rock and roll? Yeah. yeah. Man. I'm set back. Uh, I've got some popcorn ready. Let's go. There you go. But, but the first thing, Paul, before you just start jumping in yeah. to like all of the different things that you do, can you can you give us a little like uh like a rundown on how do you decide what you're gonna do? How do you do you come up with like um there's a need and then you're like what am I gonna do? Or do you just get a great idea and you're like, okay, how am I gonna use this idea? How does the whole thing happen, like start to finish? I, I, you know, it's uh it's a tough thing. It's like the you know the, the brain just doesn't stop, and you know I'm I'm kind of the the guy that functions on four to five hours of sleep every night because I'm just constantly up thinking about anything. 
and, and everything, right? So and everything. You know, when when I first when I first started the maid service, and um, you know, some of you know the story, some of you don't, but I'll share it with you. Um, it's certainly not my my background. Um, uh, kind of construction, real estate development is my back, my background and what I've done professionally most of my life. Um, I, I have gotten involved in other businesses. Um, uh, the novelty toy business. We created uh, a novelty toy, and and that was kind of fun. I was in the food business, owned a restaurant, owned a, a food truck, uh, just stuff that I wanted to have fun with. And um, you have to excuse me. I've got my little mascot. Hold on. Let me see if I can reverse this camera. Hold on. Back camera done. So she's right. getting a little crazy. <gasps> Oh, oh my gosh. She's a puppy. Yeah, she's she's cute. Uh, so, <laughs> so anyway, um, but I always, uh, always worked for myself, um, entrepreneurial, and um, uh, I was I was getting involved in a real estate deal. I knew a I knew a guy who. Hold on. Um settings okay there we go uh I, I knew a guy who had a maid service in the hoboken area uh he had for years mm -hmm. and he um he was very successful uh he sold his business for 4.2 million dollars now what what i know now having some experience in the residential cleaning business is that he really sold somebody a bag of goods um he had cooked the books <laughs> and he really screwed somebody. Um, but anyway, he had this pot of money and he, uh, I had known the guy a bunch of years and he had always thrown the offer out. If you need a partner for a real estate deal, let me know. So I had this, this small deal I was working on. I called him up. I said, here's what I got. You interested? He said, yes. I had an office in Hoboken at the time. We would spend a lot of time together there. And um, uh, I had said to him, you ever think about getting back into the maid service? Because I knew it was a cash cow. And he said, Paul, I think about it every day. So I said, as long as we're going to be involved in this real estate thing, why don't we go ahead and put a maid service together? He said, great. So over the course of the next month or so, uh, we started kind of working on marketing and a website and branding. And, uh, and what I came to find out pretty quickly was that this guy lacked um, some of the qualities that I would really need a business partner. He was a bit of a scoundrel and um, I had moved forward on the real estate thing myself and I had given him an opportunity to take the maid service. We had thrown a couple of bucks in. I said, you can just pay me what I put into it and you can take it or I'll pay you or we'll just chalk it up as a loss and just walk away. And he said, well, write me a check. So I'm like, okay. So now here I am. Okay, let's get involved in the maid service. Hired a couple of people. And now I'm thinking about, okay, like, what am I going to do? How am I going to get business? Um, I, I didn't know anything about SEO. I didn't know anything about marketing. I didn't know it. It's like, okay. Uh, what I knew is that there was a, a in our area, there was a blogger. I, I knew uh -huh. that she had a strong following. I reached out to her. I said, hey, you know, my name is Paul Freed. Started a maid service. I would love to come and clean for you. I'll do it for nothing if you like it blog about it she said okay bloggers love free stuff <laughs> that's what they do that's what they're in it for they're in it for the free yeah. stuff um it, look the, the more successful bloggers of course they uh they're in it for the advertising dollars and they they sell advertising on their sites uh which is where she is now but um but anyway we still clean her i clean her every two weeks and we have a banner ad up on her site uh, and we get a ton of work through there but after that first cleaning, what had happened was we, um, she loved the cleaning. She posted about it. And the following day, I got over 60 requests for work. Oh, I don't even remember that. I said, wow. Okay. This is good. Uh, yeah. <laughs> I, yeah. I hired, a mark, <laughs> hired a local marketing company to help me with SEO and branding and, and some other things. And, you know, and I remember sitting around talking about the, the leave behind, right? I wanted to leave something in, in people's homes. Yes. I wanted to leave something in people's homes. 
uh, after an initial cleaning. And of course it was like, you know, personalized sponges, hand sanitizer, uh, you know, all of these kind of pedestrian suggestions. And that's a really nice way of saying boring. I'm writing that down. Paul. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I, I, I had said, yeah, I, I don't know. It's, um, you know, it's just too predictable, right? And um, yeah. so, a, as a lot of you know, uh, we, we, of course, use hot sauce. Um, I, I'm a hot sauce guy. I've got uh, a collection of hot sauce. I've got over 800 bottles. And, and I thought, you know what? Let's use the hot sauce, right? So we do. We have private labeled hot sauce. So this and, was your first thing, Paul? Yes. Okay. So I love that this was your first thing. I didn't know that either. So you didn't try out soaps and sponges first and then no. like segue into hot sauce. You're like, no. The the pedestrian idea is great yeah. hot sauce. <laughs> Go for the yeah. hot sauce. Okay. So I love it. So the the um hold on, uh, I gotta get you back. Uh um, oh, we so see the, you. Um, and then the nice thing, the nice thing about the hot sauce is that okay, if people like it, they're going to want more. Mm -hmm. If they don't like it, it's going to stay in the refrigerator for quite some time. <laughs> and, Forever. And some people say, yeah. <laughs> and, and it will, it'll just, it'll just linger. And yeah. um, so, you know, so, and, and people said to me, I remember the marketing guy said, what does hot sauce have to do with cleaning? I said, absolutely nothing. <laughs> Why does it have to do with cleaning? <laughs> right so uh so, anyway, so started to have some fun with it right and i remember even when it came to brand identity or a logo uh so we have and i'm gonna turn the phone around again hold on one second um while you're there. turning your phone around i have a question about the hot sauce when people want more do you deliver it to them do they have to buy it how does it work Oh, no, these are typically customers, and we'll just leave it next time we go out to clean. Okay. Uh, if, if people come into our office, which is rare, you know, people typically don't, but when they do, I always send them out with a bottle of hot sauce, whether they whether they buy service or they don't buy service. Uh, just a little parting gift. But um, but you see our bottle, right? Yeah. Now, yeah. And in our logo, and, and I remember when I, I was talking to these marketing people, and, you know, we start start discussing um, you know, logos and you know, it was the feather duster. It was the made in the feather duster. It was bubbles and all that. And I was like, yeah, I, you know, like everybody's using it. He said, exactly. I said, but I don't want to be like everybody. Right. So now we have this bottle and, and the bottle is interesting because you know what we can do and, and we, we do this and I can show you some other, uh, some other, uh, collateral print and, and, and whatnot, but you know, it, it has kind of a figure to it, right? And yeah, you know, so we can we can dress this up like on Halloween. We put a witch's hat on, and Christmas time we put a Santa hat on, and and it, you know, so we have a lot of fun with it. Uh, you know, and our, and our balloons, right? So of course we, right, kind of throw it in there as the eye, right, the dots, and yeah, and it, and it just Perfect. and it just works, and it just works. So um, one of the things that there's an old classic dishwashing detergent that bottle is shaped like that. Do you know what that is? Palm olive. Oh, well, palm, palm olive. Is it? Yeah. Okay. Yep. Yeah. So, you know, we, um, so started to really have some fun with this, right? And um, so now it's like, okay, so we have, we have stickers and, you know, you guys know, I mean, you probably, you may have seen them plastered around Vegas during convention time. Um, I, I put stickers everywhere. Um, yes. Got to turn the camera around again. I I think we found a sticker um, at Castle Keepers oh, in Carlston. I still find those I, things. Yeah, when I was there last time, we we found a sticker. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> it's so, been years. Yeah, so, so these these stickers are about three and a half inches in diameter, and and again, right there, it's so inexpensive. And you know, we just you know, plaster them any anywhere anywhere I see stickers, I'll put a sticker. So uh, it, again, you can kind of walk anywhere around Hoboken, and you're gonna find one of these somewhere, right? Yeah. Um, 
you know, one of the things that, uh, you know, I think, you know, a lot of you may have seen, but these, these bicycles, right. And I'm going to, I'm going to show you some pictures uh, of what we do with these um, in, in thinking about, right. Where, where is there a mass of humanity, right? Where should we really spend some advertising dollars? So there's a train station and what we do, uh, what, what I did was I acquired about, um, hold on, hang on, I want to come back. Okay. Had inquired about advertising at the train station and the advertising, there's 60,000 people go through this train station every day. So, okay, that's where I want to advertise. Right. Uh, well, you know, I have to, they put me in touch with the, the marketing agency that represents the train station. And it was uh, about eleven thousand dollars for a six-month campaign, and and what that eleven thousand dollars would buy me would be uh, three posters that they would place wherever they felt they had room in the train wow. station. Wow! Unbelievably expensive. Yeah. So, what I decided to do? So hold on, I got to turn you around again. Whoop. So what I did was I, I, I went out to walmart.com and I bought these bikes, you know, just a no frills bike. It worked out great because it had a nice orange tire, which complemented our, our brand. Um, but I bought the bikes for 80 bucks. It cost me 20 bucks for the sign. And, you know, I just bought a bunch of them and chained them up all over the place. Right. So this is one that was outside the ferry stop. This was right outside. Like if you see here, this is the the stair that goes into the train station. So like people have to walk right here to go down to the train station. So it's like, boom, there you go. Right. So for a hundred bucks, I got a bike with a sign on it, and I just put them up wherever I chain them up wherever I feel like it. Um, this was my first idea that I heard about yours, Paul. That I, I was like, he did what? Like, like, how does somebody think of that? That just seems so smart to me. I mean, how do you not notice that bike? And it's not going to work with everybody's brand, right? But the orange wheels, the your brand, the blue and orange, you can't not see that bike. And you can't not look at that sign. You know, it's <laughs> very interesting, right? When you, when you think about brand identity, right? I mean, look at, look at Target. I mean, it's just, it's brilliant, right? Where they, they don't need a, a single letter. They don't need a word. They don't need anything. It's like, Nothing. boom. Yeah. And, you know, so, and we'll go outside. I'll show you some of the vehicles as well. But, um, you know, it's <laughs> a real a funny story with the bikes. So a woman called me up on Saturday morning, right? So I was in the office. I picked up the phone and she said, um, hey, look, just want you to know that, um, uh, when I got off the ferry last night, I saw your bike. This morning, I went out for a walk. The bike was gone, but the sign's laying on the sidewalk. Right? Mm -hmm. I said, okay. You know. Anyway, so we got to talking. She signed off for biweekly service. I think we still service her like three years later. It's like, <laughs> so, you know, so that lead cost me, it cost me 120 bucks. It's like, I, we were servicing her for three and a half years. It's like, okay, so they steal the bike. Who cares? Right? <laughs> That's so awesome. <laughs> so, but, you know, when it comes to, um, you know, when it comes to branding, right? Like, you know, th this was, uh, I, I was telling Liz and Tom earlier. So this is a billboard that we what we, we purchased in Hoboken right around the holidays. Um, it, it was very inexpensive. Uh, you know, I'm not a big fan of uh, outbound marketing, but, you know, when the price is right, I'll do it. Um Hang on, I'll get back to that in a second. Hold on, let me see. It was something I wanted to show you. Uh, I, I was telling Paul that when I saw the picture of the billboard, when I first saw it, I thought they were business cards. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, what? why is he showing us these two business cards? <laughs> oh! So, it, you know, so, so with, with regard to branding, right? I, you know, what's, what's great is, right, to try to 
trying to come up with a brand that somebody wants to steal. <laughs> now, this was a guy, and maybe I shouldn't be showing. Maybe I, sh I don't know. What, regardless. So, wow. Right? This was a guy down in Raleigh, North Carolina, who just plagiarized everything I did. And yeah. this, is my, this is my van, exactly, right? Let me see if I can find a made in Hoboken van. Uh, but anyway, I had a, um, a mechanic who had a cousin from North Carolina. And uh, the, the cousin was at his shop. My van was in the shop. And the cousin said, oh, we got a company just like that in North Carolina. So my mechanic called me. He said, did you open in North Carolina? I said, no. He goes, well, you might want to check out Made in Raleigh. So I jumped onto their website. And they just stole everything. Stole the website, the logo, everything. And, um, you know, of course, I called and identified myself. Never got a call back. And anyway, long story short, I, I ended up getting the, a check from his insurance company for about 45 grand. So, wow. Uh, you know, and, and of course he had to cease and desist and get rid of all, all of it. But, uh, yeah, it was, it was, I was flattered because if the guy combed the entire internet, the entire world wide web and said, this is the best, was like, <laughs> this okay, is what I'm going to do. Great. I'm flattered. <laughs> so, do, you, do you know, Paul, how long he'd done business under that, you know, using, using your, your brand? I, you know, I, I, I did, but, uh, you know, it wasn't a long period of time. It was, you know, maybe six to nine months or, or thereabouts. I don't think it was an incredibly long period of time. Is he but, still doing uh, business in Raleigh? He, he is, yeah. I think Nina knows. Really? Him. Wow. Yeah. All right. Yeah. So, you know, some of the, some of the other things that um, we kind of have fun with. So, let me see if I can, um, hold on. Uh, balloons. We do a um, you know, we do a company outing, uh, at least once a year. So this was the soccer game we went to. Like you can see the balloons kind of bouncing around here, right? So we yeah. we blew up a bunch of maiden Hoboken balloons and we were bouncing around in the soccer stadium. And oh, that's uh, a good idea. This was uh, this, so we also branded it our made in Manhattan. Uh, but anyway, so bouncing these balloons around the soccer stadium, and what happened was the security guards started to get a little upset. And I'll show you some video, but um, they were chasing the balloons around trying to pop them. It was actually pretty funny. Even more advertising. Oh, that looks pretty with right. the dark blue. That looks better with the blue than it does with the white. Yeah, so we switched over recently now. It's just black vehicles Ooh. with... Oh, it's black. Uh, yeah, so it's it, it's really nice. So this was uh, this is the made Manhattan van. Some more bikes. Let me see what else I've got here. The balloons. So even our bottles, you know, we just you know just label the bottles. You know, it's it's cheap enough to to get these stickers and of course the poker chips. And we'll go back to those. We'll talk about those in a little bit. But um, you know, I, I love. Yeah, the I like show this. Yeah. So the so the balloons, right? So we did a we do some street festivals, and you get a couple of helium tanks, and you get some balloons. Um, they're, they're very inexpensive, and they're they're so every kid wants a balloon. Every kid does. Uh, we 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 buy wait, these fruit. What? Wait, before you go back to the frisbees, you had another picture of like that crowd and how. How many balloons there are just out there? I'm like, you have like one that was from a higher view, I think. Yeah, let me see. I just wanted to show like crazy amounts of. So I had a couple of questions about the balloons. Like, um, first off, how many were there out there? Did you fill them on site? I'm guessing you did. So I'm like, oh my gosh, there's so many. So here's the crowd, right? And you can see like uh, there's balloons there's everywhere. It was all over. It was hilarious. Yeah, um, so I, I brought the helium tanks with me, and I was just filling them up there. How many uh, tanks? Uh, we had, um, I think, we went through two tanks, two, you know, large tanks. Um, and how and many balloons were, does that do? Oh, hundreds. Um, I mean, we were actually there were 
there were some other vendors there that were doing balloons as well. And they had run out of helium pretty early on. And we were, we were filling up their balloons for them also. I don't see any of their balloons. <laughs> no, no. We, we had the lion's share for sure. And the orange too. The orange is so nice. Yeah, it was great. But you know, like when, when I go to concerts, I, you know, if I go to concerts, I, you know, I, I always, hold on. Where, um, where do I have them? Um, I got balloons somewhere here. Hold on. Do you have any of the really large balloons? Yeah, well, these are pretty big. Uh, hold on, where? Are, but anyway, you know, if I go to concerts, I always bring a pocket full of balloons. I'll just blow them up and just bounce around okay. Madison Square Garden or wherever. But I mean, this is you know, you can kind of see. You know, this is pretty big. Uh, it's a bright one. And yeah. then it's the big, like the realtor balloons that are like three feet. Yeah. But they're pretty people big. See those at concerts. People will be bouncing those around. The, um, do, do, you ever, do you ever get in any type of trouble? I mean... I don't well, know. Yeah, we got yeah, thrown out of the brush it, You know, what type of pushback have you had in with, uh, on some of your marketing campaign? Don't you love the way he says it? Yeah. Yeah, listen, one of my employees got thrown out of that soccer game. Oh. Um, because so, of the balloons? Yeah, so here's the other thing that, you know, I, 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 I used to do. I don't know if we ever talked about this, but, um, you know, I, I – so, all right, here we go. So, the, the, the drone, right? So, I have the drone. <laughs> and I'm afraid. I've got, this, I've got this banner, right? Yeah. So, I used to fly this over over the parks, right? So, like, on a Saturday afternoon, yeah. you know, there's, like, hundreds of people in the park, and I would just fly this thing around, right? With the and banner it, hanging on it. With the banner hanging off of it, yeah. <laughs> and pe people got a kick out of it. Uh, except for the police, they, they didn't think it was funny. And, um, you know, there's all kinds of restrictions now with regard to these drones. And because of the proximity uh, to New York yeah. city, they, they were really giving me a hassle. Uh, so I, so I stopped playing with the drone, but I mean, here, let's, um, let's take a walk outside real quick. So tell us about the hassle. Like when they give you a hassle, do they say, Hey, cease and desist kind of a hassle or, Hey, we're, we're taking you into jail kind of a hassle. You know, the nice thing is I have a relationship with a lot of the Hoboken police officers. So it's just like, hey, Paul, come on. Yeah. And no fines or anything? So, have you, you've never gotten no, any fines? No, I've, never, oh. I've never, never gotten fined. Okay. So the, the trouble that you've gotten into is more like, come on now. A little slap on the wrist. So, you know, so this is the, this is the outside of the office. Oh, right? That's nice. And let's see. And, you know, as I was explaining to you, so, you know, for us, and I, I hope everybody can hear me. So, you know, the proximity to New York City is great. Um, and, and I'll show you a couple things in a second. But um, you can see, can you see the Empire State Building back there? Yeah. Yeah. So here's it's a tiny. Band pulling in, a couple of people getting out. So we've got, you know, we've got a few vehicles like this. We have three vans like this. We've got a couple of vans like this. So this is a, that's a 15 passenger, which is great. Oh. And hang on, let's. Um, oh, Paul, can you tell us why you have these big passenger vans? Some people don't know anything about Hoboken or uh, how it works. So for for us, we're um, we're in an urban market, so. We have drivers that shuttle teams of cleaners around, drop them off, pick them up. So our, our cleaners don't drive, our drivers don't clean. And we, we work in a pretty tight radius. Um, it, it's really, we, we don't have anything outside of a two mile uh, radius from the office. But, you know, so I've got this one parked right here, which is great because, you know, you got all this traffic that kind of comes up here and it's like a billboard. So it's really cool. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, what we'll do is I'm going to go across the street real quick. And, you know, and here's where, you know, like Liz, you, you ask about, you know, do you ever get in trouble? Yeah. Well, you know, not, nothing to speak of yet, but I'll push the envelope when need be. 
So I know it's almost like you're marking time until it happens. <laughs> like how well, how what else can I do? If I'm not in trouble for this, I need to go just a little bit harder. Right. So so right here, if you can see, right? So this is oh, yeah. the traffic going into the Lincoln Tunnels. This is going into New York City. So you can okay. see, right? It's the end of the day. There's not much traffic going in, but you see traffic coming out. And it'll get worse, you know, five, eh, six o'clock or thereabouts. But there's, I mean, hundreds of thousands of cars that are coming here, right? So, yeah. you know, and, and this, I mean, look at this fence, right? So, you know, I mean, I'll just drape a banner right over here and just let it hang down, right? <laughs> <laughs> and it's just free advertising, right? Now, granted, somebody's going to get a little upset. Yeah. I don't know how much time I'll get out of it, but... You mean time in terms of the sign being up or jail time? <laughs> <laughs> you know, it's... Uh, yeah, so we'll see. But So here's the traffic coming out of the tunnel, right? So you see, you see this. Oh, yeah. You know... So I mean, listen, yeah. even if even if I were to just get a T-shirt and just lean this way, <laughs> am I really breaking the law? Probably uh, not. I, I'm not thinking that you would be. Especially no. maybe if you lined, you know, like blocked the yeah, whole yeah. sideway. Yeah, everybody has a different yeah. letter on their shirt. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Yeah, and then you just line them up. Yeah, that is a, a beautiful, I, I can even kind of understand how that amount of traffic can just make your brain start heart pumping. Like, I, I got to figure out something for this. But, I mean, why couldn't you just, like, tie your maiden Hoboken balloons onto the fence? Or, I mean, gosh, it seems like you already no, don't do this. But just stand up there and, like, throw stickers. <laughs> <laughs> and the road. So that they like stick on people's cars. It'd be awesome. <laughs> oh. Uh, okay, so Paul, you you obviously do have um you're very imaginative, obviously. And you're also kind of fearless. You're not afraid to try all of this, the these great things. Uh, of all of the things that you have done, all the different things. Which have you really enjoyed the most? What's that noise? I don't that... know. Oh, no. We lost Paul. Darn. He'll be back. Okay. Yeah. I, I know I disappear a lot. And then I, I, know, I, see. I mean, coming up with, you know, an idea. I mean, just the hot sauce alone is worth the price of admission. But the yeah. story just keeps going and keeps going and keeps going. It's not the balloons. It's the Frisbees. It's not the Frisbees. Oh. He hasn't done the Frisbees yet. I love the Frisbees. Yeah, I can't wait. The, the drone, I mean. Hey, Paul. There we go. I, I had a hard yeah. time hearing yeah. you. Yeah. Okay. There we're we just saying, so, you know, the stories never stop, you know. We can, you know, we can have a discussion about the hot sauce. But it's just like the hot sauce and the Frisbees and the bicycles and, you know, the balloon. Oh. Oh, lost them again. Dang it. Ooh. Poo poo. Well, I I love the the frisbee thing. I think this is just a great idea, and we'll get him to show them. But I I mean, you what you were, you remember in foundations though, when he showed us the bicycle thing, we just kind of like just everybody stopped for a minute. We need <laughs> to check this out. We could barely even function because it was just so. Wow. It was like matter of fact. It was, wow, yeah. of fact. It was like, you got to be kidding me. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, you know, and we were all we, doing all the pedestrian stuff, <laughs> right? Like, here's my soap. Here's my little microfiber. Here's my little, I'm not talking about my stupid stuff. I got anymore. a door hanger here. I put a, a <laughs> magic eraser in it. Yeah, Paul, we were all talking about how, can you hear us? Okay. Yeah, you can't hear us. Oh, such a bummer. Well. 
Paul, Nina, have, we were just talking about well, while Paul is going, Nina's on here right now. And Paul, uh, Nina, we were just talking about how the maiden Raleigh guy had um, <laughs> purloined <laughs> the maiden Hoboken branding. And so he showed his practices to an uh, inappropriate level. Yeah, he had like uh, the maiden Raleigh a van. And I mean, it, it, it was a great job. He did an excellent job. <laughs> I, I actually kind of felt a little bit sorry for him when Paul was telling the story because he invested a lot of money into that really beautiful branding. Can you imagine how sad he was to have to change it all and, and to pay a chunk of change on top of that? Oh, Pooh, we can't hear you. We can read your lips, but we can't hear you. Uh, okay, well, here, we're going to... Well, maybe it. he's going to get a phone again. It looks like he's going to get a phone. Bank. Anyway, I'm going to talk about the Frisbees real quick. <laughs> Which is voicemail. Go ahead, Liz. Uh, okay, so I was just going to talk about the Frisbees. So um, the Frisbees aren't your favorite? Uh, oh, no, Maiden Raleigh is not your favorite. Yeah, I can I can imagine that. But um, the Frisbees, I thought it was such a great idea. He just had a ton of them printed. And, you know, he lives right there by the big fancy parks. And he would just go down there and he would throw Frisbees to everybody to play with at the park. And so who's not going to take that Frisbee? It's a fun thing to do at the park and just everywhere he goes. Takes Frisbees, throws them out, driving down the road. And we'll find out, Leslie. We will find out where he purchases these because he always says they're so cheap, right? He always says everything's so cheap. He does a lot of stuff that's inexpensive. Um, over, I, I guess what he's talking about is the return on that investment is really, really inexpensive for him. Uh, but like he'll be driving down the road, people outside, beautiful summer day, the weather is beautiful, and he'll just toss them a frisbee kids playing in their yards toss them a frisbee i'm like oh my gosh that, that's this is just so right up my and plus i love to play frisbee but i'm thinking gosh this is just seems like such a fun thing to do how can anybody even complain about this and people aren't going to get you're, you're not just gonna somebody's gonna throw you a frisbee and you're gonna be like oh well and just leave it on the ground and if you did Somebody else is going to pick it up and take it home. It's never garbage, right? It never gets thrown away. Yeah, we do want to find out how much some of the items cost. He will, if we can get him back on here again. Now, we have had the most technical difficulties over the past few days. We have. We have. I thought today was going to be better. It was going pretty well up until then. Yeah, we'll find out, Nina. I know Leslie want to know where he gets them to, and we'll find out how much. Um, but he, I know what he's going to tell us, though, you guys. He's going to say he doesn't know. He just buys them wherever. He just goes on the Internet. <laughs> he just does a search. That's what I remember him telling us about the stickers. Just he, wherever I can get them. He didn't talk about ink pens, but he buys, like, boxes of these plastic ink pens, and he'll, like, go into, like, banks and take the bank's pens and replace them with his pens. That's awesome. <laughs> he'll, he leaves his pens everywhere. And he doesn't leave his pens like one or two pens like everybody else does. He leaves entire man-sized fistfuls of pens everywhere he goes. Or he was talking in yesterday or whatever day it was, Friday also, when he goes to restaurants, Mexican restaurants, he takes his own hot sauce and he replaces their hot sauce with his hot sauce so like they have tabasco yeah you no longer have tabasco now you have made in hoboken's hot sauce he leaves a trail wherever he goes he leaves a trail with some type of swag yeah. with his company name on it and everywhere that we've ever been that he's been that's been the case so and we still find like we we're saying we still find his stuff oh he Maybe yeah. get closer. <laughs> I, I I think he's just right now building interest. 
geez, this is a Paul branding thing. See how we're all paying such close attention to him, waiting for him. Gonna do. <laughs> this is all part, all, all part of our plan here, guys. Yeah, it's part of the presentation. Hey, Paul, grab your phone. Oh, Paul, so, I need more the basketball. Now he oh, says now he's got help. His phone is dead. Oh, his phone is dead. Okay. So, <laughs> I love that his phone is dead. <laughs> it's. You know, Paul's demonstrating, though, that you don't have to be great at everything. That's right. That's right. As, as long as you are great at the stuff you're great at. And boy, is he ever great at what he does. So they, um, one of the other things that we always talk about all of Paul's swag and all of the cool marketing things that he does. But you see when he's talking, he doesn't just talk about the stuff. He talks about the branding. And how strong the branding is and how he's just he's he's pushing that branding so it's not it's not uh just about the things it's not frisbees and balloons and it's whatever whatever uh vehicle he can use to just make his branding stronger and stronger and stronger that's what he's always doing getting his branding in front of more and more people you hear him talk about or show the bottle and you might have noticed that the bottle has a lot of words on it did you notice that it all the bottles don't say the same thing um a lot of them say made in hoboken but some of them don't some of them say clean some of them say you know made and uh, they don't all say made in hoboken so depending on how he's using them in his branding but again the bottle Regardless of what words you see coming out, you know that's a Maiden Hoboken bottle. Lost him again. Poor Paul. Wait and that's frustrating for him. Paul. Paul. There. And he's there? back. Yep. All right. We're back in business. All right. Hold on. Let me. Okay. There we go. So, sorry about that. My phone died and I couldn't get my, my desktop up. And anyway, sorry. Not, well, we actually used it for a really good thing, Paul. So Tom made the point that, look, you don't have to be perfect at everything, right? So here's Paul. He's amazing at the branding and at the marketing, but maybe the tech is not as great. <laughs> I, was, I was sharing with everybody about the Frisbees, Paul. So you could show us the Frisbees. I was explaining how you make them so fun for people that, they never become trash. Everybody takes a Frisbee home, plays with a Frisbee, looks at it, keeps it. Oh, it's, it's great. You know, and, and certainly, listen, if you're out in, if you're out in suburbia, um, <laughs> you know, listen, just run around and throw away. Hold on. Let me, um, hold on. Camera. Uh, back camera done. Hold on. Okay. So, oh, yeah. So, you know, I've got, you know, just a box of Frisbees. <laughs> we've got more Frisbees. Um, yeah, I buy them, I don't know, 5,000 at a clip, whatever it is. But Okay, that's what people want to know. Our foosball table. Okay, we do need to know about the so, people want to know. Where do you get them, Paul? Where do you get your stuff? <clears throat> Can you hear us, Paul? So the free, uh, okay. you know what? I get up and see. Can Can you hear me? We can now. You You can hear me? Yes. Yes. Okay. So the um, yeah, the frisbees. I you know I've got. To, I'll get that information over to you. I mean, it's been a while since I bought some because I buy them in such quantity. <laughs> uh, yeah. But they're they're about ninety cents a piece, and okay. you know it's just. Again, right? Like if you if if you're in suburbia and you're cleaning houses, just just don't throw them out the window. Throw them on people's lawns. For for me, I go to um, like I would go to the park. I used to go to the park like beginning of the season, springtime, and just hundreds of them. I would just launch them, boom, and kids would start chasing them. And before you know it, kids are walking all over the place, right? Boom, and everybody had a frisbee. It's great, and they bring them home, and 
you know, same deal. You know, they kind of linger around. And, you know, look, do I, do, do I expect that somebody's going to be sitting in the park, they get hit in the leg with a Frisbee, and they pick it up and say, oh, let me get a cleaning? No, but, but again, it's brand recognition. <laughs> yeah. People remember it. Yeah. Is there, you know, if somebody got like hit in the eye with it, would they sue you? I mean, I just can't think about all of the crazy stuff that unintended consequences that has to happen with stuff like that. I mean, I was sure how you like will carry ink pens and like go into a bank and take all of their ink pens and replace them with your ink pens. So you gotta, I mean, you've got to like, get called out on that sometimes, so, right? So TD Bank, and fortunately, I, I don't know, I, I have a good relationship with the people at the bank, but um, I, I've done it a couple of times where I've gone in, and if anybody's ever banked at TD, they're like, they're the pen bank, right? Like they just, it's pens all over the place, pens, pens. So um, I, I went to, believe it or not, I went to Citibank. I had an account at Citibank. I asked the teller for a pen. They gave me a TD Bank pen. <laughs> so anyway, so I, I go in and they have like a huge, I got a picture of it somewhere, but they have a huge jar of pens. So I just go and I take them all out. I throw me and the Hoboken pens in there. And the first time I did it, nobody said anything. The second time I did it, I got a call from the branch manager and he said, listen, I get a kick out of that stuff, but you can't do it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> but you still got a chunk of pens out there. Yeah. And, and, you know, and you don't mind being a little smack on the wrist. I think you're a big enough personality, too, that that people kind of expect some fun stuff from you, and they don't take it in a bad way. They take it. It's fun. Everything that you do is in fun, and it's just it's part of it. So it's not meant to be, uh, and it is meant to get business, obviously, but it's done in such a, 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 a nice way, a, a friendly, fun way that people can't get as mad as I think they might at other people. <laughs> and, you know, it's, so, you know, one of the things that I did early on also, which is pr pretty inexpensive and, uh, and great advertising, um, placemats at a diner so there was a new diner that opened up and you know so went in and and i was a, a fan of the food and got to know the owner and said hey you know would you mind if i supplied you with placemats and of course the guy's like for free i said yeah for free so, <laughs> placemats printed up and it had of course the name of the diner and then you know you got your little tic-tac-toe games and hangman and all that other stuff and then boom made in hoboken you know uh and i i gave the guy whatever it was ten thousand of them uh it, it cost pennies i mean really pennies and every table in the diner had made in hoboken placemat you know uh yeah co coasters in the bars right same deal i bought a bunch of coasters and you know look these bar owners they they, they get coasters for free from the beer distributors. So they'll take them from anybody. They don't care. Uh, yeah. So that, that was a good, good source of, of new business. But, uh, you know, again, it's like, you know, wh where are there a lot of people and where are they just going to see you? Right. Like, I mean, listen, whenever I go, hold on, let's, uh, let me turn the, let me turn this around again. Nina's saying she does that with beer pint glasses for restaurants and breweries. You provide the glasses, Nina? And if you do provide the pint glasses, tell us how you much know, so, those cost. Again, you know, again, the stickers, right? I, yeah. You know, if I'm at a urinal and I'm standing there taking care of business, like I'll put a sticker right there. Boom, so the next guy comes in, he's got no choice but to see it. Right? <laughs> okay, Paul, how much... How much do you spend on like this kind of um, branding, marketing stuff? Like, do you spend a percentage, or what do you do? Yeah, I probably spend about ten grand a year. I mean, it's you know, it's not a not a ton okay. of money. And, and look, and, and I, look, I'm, any, anybody who knows me, you'll what? Hold on, let me go back. Hold on. Um, There we go. So, I mean, anybody that knows me knows 
rather rather excessive, and I probably don't even need to spend that much. Um, but you, you know, like I, I don't, you know, I, I buy in bulk um, just because uh, you know, you're going you're gonna to buy, you know, 500 frisbees. You could pay a dollar eighty. You could buy five thousand of them and spend ninety cents. So uh, I'll spend ninety cents a frisbee. Um, but um, yeah, I, I love a good deal too. I always do that. You know, a lot of the stuff is just, it's, it's insignificant, you know, it's just cheap. I mean, look, you know, I, I don't know how many people have stationary, right. But, you know, and, and look how many people are really mailing anyway, but you know, anytime I have to put anything in an envelope to go anywhere, it's in a made in Hoboken envelope. Yeah. Right? Like why not? I mean, it's just, you know, get the name out there, get it, you know, wherever. Um, I, I, I have a bunch of folders, um, you know, we used to, in the beginning, I used to go and, and see people. Hold on, where? Let me see if I have a folder. There we go. There's a Made in Hoboken folder, right? Uh, oh, yeah. Used to go and, and give people, to put this card in there, whatever it is. You know, now, of course, we don't do that. But be, because I am this excessive guy, I still have hundreds and hundreds of these folders. So I give them to my my daughter's class, and now every kid in class has made no book and folders. Right? <laughs> uh, they bring them home. The teachers, the teachers love it because it's like free stuff that they can give yeah. to the kids. Um, so, again, just constantly being in people's face. Constantly. Do you, do you still so, spend money on more traditional forms of advertising, Paul? Or is this um, what you do? So, uh, yes, the, the answer is yes. Um, you know, so, so I, I've showed you a, hold on, let me see if we can, um, I'm gonna have to turn you around again. Hold on. Um, yeah, just so we know we're, uh, I got about six minutes left before we, oh. we get to the hour. Okay. Thank you. We'll bring Paul back again. This is, this is like part one of. Yeah. Cause we've always been with Paul. So, so real quick, so the stickers, right? So these stickers are three and a half inches. These stickers are about an inch and a quarter in diameter. Okay. All right. Yeah. You know, and we we use those because people, um, you know, get a little upset that we uh, perform some origami on their toilet paper, right? Uh, pe people people say, well, you know, look, if I'm paying if I'm paying based on time, uh, you know, and of course they think it takes. 20 minutes, 30 minutes to make a flower on their toilet paper when these girls bang it out in about 20 seconds. Um, so, so we switched over to stickers now. So what we do is just, you know, little triangle and put a little maiden hobo sticker on the toilet paper. Right. And, you know, again, it's just kind of a hopeful like touch and it's very, very inexpensive. Um, so, so we've got that. And Did anybody you know, like about was concerned that that was, wasting two sheets of toilet paper, especially during COVID when you couldn't find it. <laughs> I would just, yeah, you know, we do get, we, we, you know, we did get that, you know, people are like, you know, I, uh, they get frustrated or whatever it is. And it's, it, it's few and far between. And uh, yeah. so it's yeah, not that big a deal. You know, one of the it really doesn't matter about, what you do. Uh, you know, people are going to complain. <laughs> yeah. You're not going to make everybody. Yeah, always. There's there's going to be somebody. You know, the, um, I, I don't know. Yeah, I don't know how many people are, are into video emailing, um, but you know, that that's been another, another great source. Um, and oh, there he is. We lost you, Paul. I can only drum up this by emailing prospects so we've been playing around with bomb bomb you guys familiar with that yes yeah yeah and, and bomb bomb is great i mean it's a couple hundred bucks a year to, to join it's like unlimited e video emailing and um you know could always can always draw a new business that way I mean, we've got, got 2,876 uh, prospects logged in to our database. Wow. And 
you know, every once in a while, I'll just throw out a little bomb bomb video, and there, there's always business to be had there. Okay, no more sharing, no Love more that. ideas. Yeah. No more Paul, ideas. Paul, you're going to come back again, and we're going to pick this up. This is part one of a multi part expose. Yeah, because we have to go, we're out of time. But we definitely, uh, I, what I would really love it, Paul, if next oh, time we could okay. get you back, I, I'm putting to get together the schedule. Uh, maybe we could get you back in July and you could talk to us um, a little bit more about like how, how you come up with these ideas and you know, um, you know how, how can we come up with these ideas? How do we channel, how do we channel our inner Paul? Yeah, <laughs> we we need something more than just. We don't really want to be writing you a forty thousand dollar check, so we don't want to just be stealing all of your ideas. But we need to be able to come up with some great ideas of our own. We need we need to channel our inner Paul, like Tom says. So Tom, what would you say that that um, Paul's uh, method of marketing and branding okay. as a good use of time during this, this, um, what kind of time is it again? Unprecedented time with this uh, COVID-19 crisis. Yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. You know, I mean, hopefully we're all getting a little bit bigger right now, actually cleaning homes and generating revenue, but this is still a wonderful time for us to be thinking out of the box and creating, uh, you know, ways to make our businesses better. And, yeah, this is, you know, I know like during foundations, you know, Derek, uh, you know, does, uh, you know, a presentation on guerrilla marketing. And I mean, Paul, like, has just put it on steroids. Yeah, I, I think that we just take Paul, put him in the PowerPoint, and that's enough. <laughs> like, that's guerrilla marketing. <laughs> well, so, Paul, well, in our last uh, couple of minutes, ahead, here, do you want to share what we've got coming up for the rest of the week? Sure. Well, um, tomorrow we have Alonzo Adams. And, um, well, this is going to be a, a much heavier topic than today's topic, obviously. Uh, we're going to be talking about racism in America. I guys just want to two days we plan on talking about on a, on a regular basis about what's going on in, um, out, out in the world. Well, you know, whether it's COVID or right now we got Black Lives Matter, what, what's important? Um, and so on Wednesday, we're gonna have Paul August. If you guys don't know him, you need to be on this call. Another great Paul in a completely different way, but absolutely another great Paul. Um, he uh, is gonna be talking about growing your business during a pandemic. His business is growing and flourishing. Is yours? If not, get on the call on Wednesday or on the Facebook Live. On Thursday, uh, we're going to have Terry Knight on. And I think that most of you know that Carrie Knight is very well known uh, for keeping it real. That's She, she will give it to you like it is. Uh, she spoke at the convention and told everybody that, hey, it was hard for me because I thought I was the smartest person in the room. <laughs> and I had to get over that to be able to grow. And her, her the topic that she's going to be talking about is she wants to talk about the top three strategies that you can implement in your business right now to gain back all of your lost customers from coronavirus. So that's what she's going to be talking about. And she's going to be keeping it real. So she's going to tell you that they're not all coming back. You weren't always great, even if you thought you were. And she'll be talking more about how it was with her. Um, and then on Friday, we have got another surprise guest. And for On The Spot, I think you guys would all appreciate how great it was to have Paul on Friday. You're going to love our new guest as well. Oh, okay, Paul, what's her name? Yep, here you go. What's her name, Paul? Luna. Luna. Luna, oh, she's so cute. Tom has a new puppy too, and uh, and her name's Molly. We haven't seen her in a few days, so we're needing our puppy fix. Yeah, oh, she's cute. Um, so Friday, the hint. Do we have a good hint for our Friday guest, Tom? <sighs> well, let's see. Your Friday, you you said that this person was 
you made a, sure. you made a comment about their. No, I said small. 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 Okay. Um. So I'll, I've got one. Here's one. So um, if I had to choose somebody to bet on, it would be this person. I would absolutely bet on this person in any situation. So that's that's my next that's my next clue right there. All righty. Well, Thank you so much, Paul. Paul, you're you're awesome, and you got to you'll yes. have to come back again, and we'll just have to pick up where we left off, and the yes. story continues. Yeah. Uh, tomorrow is is going to be really special as well, and you know I've been talking to Alonzo a little bit about what we're going to be talking about tomorrow, and we as business owners all have an obligation to to to, to step up, become as informed as we can be, and and you know do the right thing for 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 all of our stakeholders so this is um this is a step in that direction i really hope that uh, that we have a big crowd tomorrow again paul thank you Pam. thank you so much this was this was thank good you guys um we will uh, we will do that again here uh real soon um we'll be here tomorrow at five o'clock eastern you guys uh, take care and we'll see you tomorrow Thanks, Tom. Thanks, Liz. Thank Thanks you. again, Paul.